As the final month for summer vacation is upon us, we take a look at what your U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has been doing in the sweltering heat in this, the August 2022 edition of Corps Connection. Welcome to another Core Connection, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers vlog that gives you a look at what USACE has been up to over the past month. I'm your host, Patrick Bloodgood. We start off this month's episode with the Louisville District, which honed its flood fighting capabilities with its first in-person training since the COVID-19 pandemic started. Hello, I'm Bob Burek with the Emergency Management Office. I'm the Emergency Operations Manager in the Louisville District. Uh, today, we're happy to be doing our first uh, in-person flood fight training for the last two years. Uh, we've done some virtual trainings, but it's not quite the same as when you can get your hands on uh, with some of the equipment and demonstrate some of the capabilities of the Louisville District flood fight teams. Uh, this morning, we started off with uh, some presentations in our EOC. We did a couple of PowerPoint presentations and some videos about the core authority, uh, our ability to respond to disaster events, and some of our techniques and materials that we have and we're able to provide to some of the local communities and sponsors to help them really supplement their efforts uh, to respond to flood fight events. So this afternoon, after a pause for lunch, we're all meeting out here at our uh, warehouse where we keep uh, some of our flood fight materials and we store our automated sandbag machine. Uh, we're going to have the team come out here and we're going to go over use of the automated sandbag machine here and this really helps uh, just as a force multiplier for our capability to crank out a lot of sandbags to help that community as quick as possible um, not only to get them up to speed for the materials that they need for their flood fight but to produce as many sandbags as we can for that community and then move down the river to help the next group and so on and so forth. The group that we have today with us is a lot of engineers from uh, different uh, divisions up there in the geotechnical branch. Uh, we have some levee safety folks, uh, some H&H, &H, and uh, some dam safety personnel. Um, they are really our technical experts uh, for flood fight. So be able to come out here and see what kind of materials and what kind of options we can present to those communities. Um, those uh, flood fighters will be able to go out into the field and not only provide their engineering expertise, but then also relay the other capabilities that we have as the Corps of Engineers to bring materials to help those communities and to supplement their efforts. The Omaha District's Fort Randall Dam is kicking off an upgrade to its power generation capabilities by meeting with the project's contractors to get the project started on the right foot. Since its completion in 1953, the hydropower plant at Fort Randall, South Dakota has had multiple upgrades to increase the functionality of the dam, and recently another project has been greenlit. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, in partnership with Voith Hydro America, held a major unit rehabilitation partnering meeting to discuss the collaboration on the project. My name is Russell Kiefer. I'm the Operations Project Manager at Fort Randall Dam. Today we're having a uh, major unit rehab partnering meeting with uh, Voith Hydro and the Corps of Engineers. Okay, the project entails just upgrading our units from 40 megawatts to 50 megawatts, in about that area. That'll entail uh, replacing the turbine runner and the, uh, the stator coils. After two decades of planning, the USACE Omaha District finalized a contract for upgrades to the hydropower dam. Leaders, project managers, and engineers from the district met with the contractor to discuss the goals and expectations of the contract. I'm John Seiferth. I'm with Voith Hydro. I'm responsible for operations. I'm the COO. Well, this kickoff meeting is vital for both teams to come together and understand what the project success factors are, uh, how we can make decisions on behalf of the project, on behalf of the value for the, uh, for the core in the district. Leaders from all parties are dedicated to ensuring this $150 million construction contract is successful. To me, success is, it's pretty easy. A happy contractor and a happy government, right? Uh, working through the inevitable challenges that are gonna be coming to us um, are, are really why the Corps of Engineers 
is, is, is in business. It's why we are here to service the nation for the nation's toughest engineering problems. The, the, the opportunity to provide a high efficiency hydroelectric facility that's current to 2020 standards um, is vitally important to serve the nation as we talk about energy independence and our ability to provide this uninterruptible electrical, water, or electrical uh, service to, to the nation. The project's estimated completion date is December 2031. Reporting from the Office of Public Affairs, I'm Jason Colbert. Another turbine project already underway at Walla Walla District's Ice Harbor Dam is making the facility safer for fish to pass through. Hydropower, a clean, reliable energy source, just became safer for fish and more efficient at generating electricity, thanks to the new turbines at Ice Harbor Lock and Dam on the Snake River in southeast Washington. The work we're doing on the turbines is increasing the survival through the turbines and also increasing the efficiency of those turbines. So those two are going hand in hand. We're looking for the win-win of getting better survival through turbines and uh, improved efficiency of those turbines. On February 17th, the gantry crane at Ice Harbor hoisted 360 tons of turbine components, including an adjustable blade turbine runner, shaft, an intermediate head cover, and the upper discharge ring insert, and carefully lowered them into their new home the Unit 3 turbine pit in the Ice Harbor Powerhouse. We focused on the turbine itself rather than uh, the turbine as a, as a component of the overall passage route. The turbine survival program was first to assess what the survival was and what's entering fish, and then to develop operational and design improvements. We've done a number of um, hyperbaric studies on fish passing through turbines set some criteria in terms of uh, pressure thresholds, uh, basically uh, setting the limits on what the pressure change is through turbine passage, where we expose them to simulated turbine pressures using a, a small hyperbaric chamber. We took then that criteria and applied it to the design of these new turbines. We developed criteria in the turbine survival program we developed tools for evaluating the turbine passage and then we used that criteria and those tools to design this new turbine. All of these efforts are slowly reshaping and modernizing hydropower in the Pacific Northwest to be more efficient and safer for fish. The Walla Walla District, along with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, transferred the operations of the Dwarshack Fish Hatchery in Idaho this past month to the Nez Perce Tribe. The facility was constructed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in the 1960s on tribal land. Since then, the tribe has been a valued partner in working to maintain fish stock in the Clearwater River Basin. And I'd like to welcome you to beautiful Osaka, Idaho for the Dwarshack National Fish Hatchery Transfer. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has transferred fish production management at this federal facility to the Nez Perce Tribe. This is an example of USAIS fulfilling its tribal trust responsibilities and placing the tribe in a position to play a direct role in the sustainability of this resource and the tribe's future. We present ourselves in this way, not only as a, as a way to represent our way of life, our identity, our culture that's tied to places such as this place here, but also to remind ourselves of how we are accountable to the land. The Nez Perce tribe's expertise in fisheries and environmental stewardship makes them an ideal partner to take on this increased role at Dorsak National Fish Hatchery. We just appreciate all those that worked on it over the years and a lot of difficult discussions, but you know, we got through all those things and got to this point where you know, the future management of this facility is the responsibility of the Nez Perce tribe. And we, you know, we're just thrilled to be able to do that. The ancient and deep connection to this place is evident. What is also evident is the respect and reverence that the staff at the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the Army Corps of Engineers have for that connection and the traditions that come along with them. The continued collaboration between the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the Nez Perce Tribe at Dorshai Hatchery demonstrates a long-standing and strong tribal federal partnership. That wraps up this edition of Core Connection. We'll be back next month with another episode. Until then, 
Have a safe Labor Day and enjoy the rest of the dog days of summer. I'm Patrick Bluggett and this has been Core Connection.